All right, uh, HLs, um, we're going to go a little bit further. You guys have to focus a little bit more on the logarithm rules, the exponent rules, things like that. And so that's what I'd like to do as we go forward here for the next little bit. All right. Um, most of this video is just going to be working through examples and kind of talking through ideas. Um, and, and then hopefully that'll give you enough that you'll be able to work through some of the applications that will be in your homework tonight. All right. So let's go straight into it. Uh, I've got four questions up here at the top. The first thing that I want us to do is just kind of work through these and be able to solve for each of them uh, to get an exact answer for x. Okay, we're going to write each of them so that x equals and then have some type of exact answer for that. So what I'd like for you to do, you probably have enough information to do this after watching the first video. So in just a second, I want you to pause it and work through these and see if you can get the answer. And then watch as I go through it. Or you can skip up to where the answers are. And if you're completely correct, you're welcome to move on. If you have any mistakes, then again, go back and watch and see uh, how each of them has worked. I'll, I'll talk through each one. All right, so pause it now. All right, so we're going to solve these. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is uh, obviously number one. So number one is 10x to the fifth, uh, 10, 10 to the x equals 5. What I need to do is I need to get rid of the 10. That's an exponential. So I'm going to do log of this side and log of that side. That gives me log of 10 to the x equals log of 5. Uh, as we know, the logarithm and the exponential are going to cancel each other out, leaving me with x equals log of 5. And that is an exact answer. We can leave it right there. All right. Uh, next one. Next one, we're going to move on to the next function where we have e to the 2x equals 12. This time, what I need to get rid of is the e. So I'm going to use a log base e on each side. Uh, hopefully, you're familiar with the case that I can just use ln instead of using log base e. Those are the same thing. So that's going to give me ln of e to the 2x equals ln of 12. The ln and the e are inverses, so they cancel each other out, leaving me with 2x equals ln to the 12. And then I need to divide both sides by 2. So I end up with x equals either 1 half natural log of 12 or natural log of 12 divided by 2, e either way. Please do not write it as natural log of 6. That is not correct. Um, do not write this because you cannot divide the inside of the function without dividing the natural log. So it either has to be 1 half of natural log of 12 or natural log of 12 divided by 2, just like that. All right, uh, we'll continue on. Now log of x equals 3. To get rid of the log, I need to do the inverse, which is do 10 to the power of. And so this becomes 10 to the power of log x equals 10 to the power of 3, and then we should be able to cancel out the 10 and the log, because those are inverses, giving us x equals 10 to the 3. Now, I like this method, writing it out this way, because now we're following the same exact process that you follow for every single other equation that you've ever solved for doing the opposite, doing the inverse. I know that some people have memorized little things like you move the A here and the B there and all these types of things, but you know what? In the long run, that's you're not gonna memorize that. That's not something that's gonna be helpful to you. Understanding that these are opposites, that these are inverses, that is gonna be the best thing to help you as you go forward and you move on to different types of functions and we combine this with different types of functions is gonna be so much easier if you can just show that you're doing the opposite and follow the same exact process you've done for every single other type of equation and function uh, <laughs> throughout your mathematics career up to this point. All right, so there we go, x equals 10 to the third. That is an exact answer. You can write it as x equals 1,000 if you want. That one's easy enough to work out. Moving on to the last question, we've got 3 times natural log of x equals 7. I can't do the e yet. What I need to do is get the natural log by itself, right? Remember when we do PEMDAS, we got P-E-M-D-A-S, and when we're, uh, or BEDMAS or whatever you got it. You can write down whatever you're using for your order of operations. When we solve for x, we're working backwards, right? A natural log is the inverse of an exponent, and so its value is right here. It's in that same category with the exponents, okay? Which means that 
uh, I need to do addition subtraction first, then I do multiplication division, and here is a multiplication three times natural log of x. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by three, and then I'm going to come down here below. So I'm going to have natural log of x, because those two are going to cancel out, equals seven over three. And then to get rid of the natural log, I need to do the inverse. The inverse function of that is e to the power of, so e to the power of natural log of x and e to the power of 7 over 3. Those are going to cancel out, leaving me with x equals e to the 7 over 3 power. And that's perfectly fine. Um, so here we go. Uh, we've got logarithm rules. Most of these logarithm rules you've learned before. You should have learned in Algebra 2. But we're going to review them now and make sure that we're comfortable with putting them together and just work through a couple of examples. What we're going to do in each of these four situations is rewrite it as a single logarithm. Okay. Um, obviously, with your calculator, sometimes this really isn't necessary. But if you do have x and y and you need to be able to solve for y, then you need to be able to isolate the y before you do anything else. So um, we are going to practice this. This is something that you'll be required to do. Now, this stuff up here on the left-hand side, I copied that from your formula packet. So all of those formulas are given in your formula packet. All right. Notice that the variables a, x, and y all need to be positive. Okay. If they're not positive, then uh, there's a problem. You can't do it. All right. So we're going to work through this. We're going to see if we can rewrite each one of these uh, so that it's just log of something. All right. So our first one here is log of x over 2. Um, which that I need to be able to uh, figure out how to turn that into a single log. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one right here, right? This one is a log times m, okay? But this is divided by 2. We know that division is the same as multiplication by the reciprocal. So I'm going to rewrite that first as 1 half log of x. And now I have this situation right here where I have m, which is 1 half, times log base a. In this situation, a is 10 because it's just the common log of x. And so I can rewrite it. Notice that here what happens is that the m, which was in front, has been brought in front to be the power. And so I'm just going to take that 1 half. It's going to become the power. And my final answer will be log of x to the 1 half. Now, it's also possible that that is written as log of the square root of x. Either one of those is acceptable. I would probably usually just stay with this one, though I think your textbook will write it in this format. Okay, well, let's move on to the next one. We've got a log of x minus 2 log of y. So I want to write that as a single logarithm. I'm looking over here on the left. Now, one of the things that I see is this one right here. Right, I see that I've got a log x minus log y. The thing you need to recognize is that there is no coefficient here right? in the formula over here on the left. Because there is a coefficient here, I need to rewrite that first before I can use this rule. Okay. Now, we did just learn that we can take a coefficient and move it up as an exponent. So that's going to be the first thing that we do here. We're going to rewrite the log x just the way it is. But then the 2, that coefficient, we're going to pull up as the exponent, just like it says in that third rule right there. Okay, so minus log y squared. Now we can use this second rule over here, which the second rule says if I have log base of, if the, as long as the bases are the same, and they both have a log, right, you cannot use this if it's, log of x minus y squared, okay? Okay, this situation will not work there, okay? So please don't do that, okay? It only works if you have log of something minus log of something. So as you can see over here, we can rewrite it as then log of x over y squared. And then now it's written as a single log. Okay, now we move down to this one and you may say, well, yeah, but there is only one log there. Well, yes, there is only one log, but also you have a constant here. So we need to figure out how we can rewrite this 
so that it is really only one log, no extra things being added on, okay? So uh, what I want you to think about is, well, I need a natural log, right? If I have two natural logs here, then it might fit this first equation up here where I have a log base A, where the A here is E. So it'll be log base E of X plus log base E of Y. So can I rewrite one as a logarithm? Okay, now there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. If you really have absolutely no idea, then you can do this. We know that we want it to be base E, so we can say natural log of what is equal to one, right? So this is what we wanna be able to find, is what do we need to take the natural log of so that my function right here will be the same thing as one? Well, we know that natural log is log base E, so to get rid of the natural log, if I wanna solve for B, then I just need to do E to the power of this side and E to the power of that side. And if I do that, then those cancel out, and I'm left with B equals E to the first power, or in other words, B is E. So what that means is that natural log of E, or E to the first power, is equal to one. Now, because those are equal, I can just take this and substitute it in right here to one. And so what I end up with is natural log of E plus natural log of X. And then I can use the first rule here because the base A is the same. They're both a natural log. And so I can rewrite this as natural log of E times X. And you can put the parentheses on there if you want to. And there you go. We've rewritten it as one single logarithm. This can be done for any number there, all right? Last one, we've got natural log of x plus natural log of y minus natural log of z. Yep, you probably recognize you're gonna use those first two functions. Okay, uh, go left to right, do this first. Natural log of x plus natural log of y. Using the first rule up there, we can create natural log of xy minus natural log of z, okay? Then we can use the second rule, which then will give us natural log of xy divided by z, and there's your final answer, okay? Always just go left to right if there's more than two, and it should allow you to get the correct answer. All right, so this is the last part of this video, and I want you to think a little bit about the inverse, uh, inverse aspect of the logarithm. That's really what we've been talking about for the last two videos is how the logarithm is the inverse of an exponential. Okay, so knowing what we know about an exponential graph, right? We know that a parent exponential graph would be something like this. Y equals a to the x power. And if it's just a to the x, some parent function, we know the graph is gonna look like this. We know it's gonna have a y-intercept of one, and we know that it's gonna have an asymptote at y equals zero, a horizontal asymptote, right? So now the question is, can you tell me about the parent of a log function? Parent of a log function being something like this, y equals log base a of x. So what will that look like? I'm gonna give you just a minute. If you can, please pause and see if you can draw it and do it on your own. And then I will show you and explain through what we know. All right, so go ahead and pause. All right, so hopefully what you have is something like this. We know that when we have an inverse, what that means is that they're opposite functions and it also means that y and x are gonna switch places completely, all right? So if the exponential has a y-intercept of one and I switch y and x, that means that a logarithm must have an x-intercept of one. If an exponential has a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, then, an, then a logarithm must have an asymptote at x equals zero. That is gonna be the opposite of horizontal, which is vertical. So that means as I get closer and closer, it needs to approach that just like it did over there. 
okay? And then my graph needs to mirror the other side. Remember we have this uh, y equals x going through the middle and it needs to be a perfect or near perfect reflection of that. There's my logarithm graph, okay? Has all the opposite things of the exponential. X-intercept of zero, vertical asymptote at X equals zero. So y X-intercept of one and vertical asymptote at X equals zero. And so that then gives you a basic idea about what a logarithm function should look like on a graph, all right? Hopefully this is enough to, to get you started on your work. Let me know if you have any other questions, but most of them are gonna focus around this idea of the exponential and inverse being inverses. All right, thanks a bunch.